dude. You look cold. <laughs> Yay, buffalo. Right? Well, are this you, is my life, everybody. Are you just looking terrified? <laughs> So much better. I see it already. There we go. There we go. You know what? I think it's ready. Sunday drive. <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. That'll do, pig. That'll do. I feel like I need the Dewey Decimal System to make it through all these freaking cards. The For those of you that are under 35, the Dewey Eric Decimal Flowers. System, Eric Flowers was the other guy. Yep. The Dewey Decimal System was the only way that you could find a book in the library before, you know, computers were a thing. What's a library? That's probably better. Yeah. A library is a place where you go to see books. Books are these things that were made of trees that the <laughs> elders uh, scribed the history of the world on. You can Google that. History is written by the victors. That's true. Yeah, history is always always written by the ones who uh, the ones who won. Yeah, that's right. Emerson once said, "Let your actions speak so loud that when you talk, I can't hear you." Belichick once said, "Let them run for 150 yards, and we're going to win a goddamn Super Bowl." <laughs> so. Um, as many of you know, or many of you might, may not know, we do have a webpage. Oh, yeah. HTAGSports.com, mm -hmm. right about here. Uh, where we, it's the most active around this time. Yeah. So we're talking about the draft, we're talking about free agency, that's the thing that we love to do, and it kind of lays dormant during the summer. It sometimes. sure does. Yeah, it sure uh, does. You know, it, you know, it's not for a lack of effort, just a lot of things, you know, pop up. But, uh... We're not Pulitzer Prize winning authors Oh, either. absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. I have trouble forming sentences, so it's, as you may know. But the point is, uh, we, we have an article currently up there that says five free agent offensive linemen targets yeah. that the Bills could, could get before. And I was just thinking about it, and, you know, a lot of people want the Bills to take an offensive lineman to try to protect Josh Allen. But yeah. with this being, with being statements as far as we're going to take the best available player, well, that more than likely at nine may be a defensive player. Absolutely. So yeah. in order to... to do that, perhaps they may want to sign some free agent tackles so they don't have to draft one. Even if they were going to draft a tackle, um, they realistically need to add two tackles to the roster. They realistically need to add two guards to the roster before you would even want to address the draft. Mm -hmm. Right? So I mean they're gonna have to they're gonna have to double down on the position before they even go into the draft. Yep. So I mean that's just gonna be what it is. Um, I, you're realistically looking at needing two tackles. Whether Deion Dawkins starts on the left or not, you still need two tackles because Cyrus or Cyril's, Cyril's on the right side. I'm not, I'm not in love with him at tackle. No, I, you know. No. Um, and you don't have a right tackle. I mean, Jordan Mills is your right tackle, and he's a free agent right now. Right tackle, and left tackle. That's something that we we talk about, but I don't think we explain often. Right? The yeah. major difference between right tackles and left tackles is that right tackle would be the hammer. Right in, in old school football, right? That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Uh, that right tackle was the guy that you ran behind. He was your hammer. He was your wrecking ball. You just that's that's where you. Which went. he has found success in. When he right. could fire off the ball and go and tack somebody, he's pretty well. He's pretty good. And the the other option is, I mean, as left tackle, uh, the right defensive ends is usually the, the, the speed rusher, the guy that goes after a quarterback, comes from the blind side and all that stuff. Right. The left defensive end is usually the one that has to be the run stopper because traditionally that's the way it's worked out. Well, I think the Bills are so, a good model of that. Jerry Hughes, you know, Jerry Hughes and Shaq Lawson. You know, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's a Lawson's good model. Lawson's like what, that. forty pounds heavier? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's significantly heavier. But um, you know, when you look at, and this is just a, a topic first before we get into the free agents, uh, the Bills could target uh, because I think that is important, right? So with Dable saying that he's going to add more air raid concepts to the offense because that worked for Allen. Does that impact moving Dawkins to the right? Because then you're asking him to do the exact same thing they did on the left. 
you know, swing guys out wide. That's, if you're running air raid concepts, you're looking to clear that lane as soon as you can. The best way to do that is to swing guys out wide. So, does moving Dawkins to the right make sense if you're going to be running more spread air raid concepts? I think it does because then if there happens to be an oopsie, he could see it. <laughs> Alan could see it in Whoopsies. front of him. Look out, Block. <laughs> Josh! <laughs> Incoming! <laughs> You know what, I have to imagine that there's codes for that, and it would be funny if they were just like menu items from like a Taco Bell. <laughs> right? Chalopa! Gordita! I think that'd be pretty easy to understand. Chalupa, blind side. Gordita, right side. <laughs> you had talked about looking at just the left side of the line. Uh, Chance Warmack, he's 27, uh, 22 games in the last three years. Um, he's only yeah, he doesn't have a lot of tread on the tire. You know, no. this is, I mean that was injury. But he got he got yeah. bounced around a little bit. He went to New England. No, no. Didn't Chance Warmack end up in New England last year? No. He he got originally drafted by the Titans yep. and then he went to uh, Philly, where he didn't play very much. Mm -hmm. uh, he's played 22 games in the last three years. Um, this would obviously be a you know low um, a death low, siding. low risk yeah. high yeah. reward type deal. Got a Bama connection. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Chance Warmack was a really heralded guard in the draft. Yeah, like he was yeah, second, because he was second draft, he, second guard off the board. But in that he draft. didn't go into you know the type of system that suited his talents. I agree with that. Um, you, you come from Bama, you know how to run block. Okay. And then you learn to pass block when you get to the next level, and right. maybe he just didn't he just didn't pick it up. I'm just saying this. It would be a very cheap option for the Bills to pick up a depth signing yeah. of a former first-round player that has an Alabama connection. Maybe that change of scenery will help him out a little bit. Yeah. So. I agree. I like Chance Warmack a lot. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I think if, if you're asking him to run, like be, you know, if you're asking him to go back and just be a run blocker, road grader, I think that's where he's going to be successful. Be an anvil? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where he's going to be successful. Um, Donovan, uh, looking, oh, sorry, continuing at, um, just the left side, Donovan Smith out of Tampa. Love him. Yeah, Love Donovan left tackle, Smith. Donovan Smith. He, he's played four years in Tampa, hasn't missed a game. All signs point to Tampa at five, taking Jonah Williams. Yeah. So, you know, he, he's got the size and speed that you want as far as the left tackle goes, and Tampa is only $8.4 million as of this episode. Yeah. Under the cap. They, yeah, can't they don't afford. have a lot of room. Yeah, they, they can't don't have afford. a lot of room. They got a clean house um, quite a bit. That, I mean, that makes enough. Tampa a really fascinating partner because having already made a deal with them, yes. right, it makes them a really fascinating yes. partner. And we can go about that in another episode. I mean, we talked, yeah, we'll talk about the cap casualties for Tampa that uh, they There's can a, save a lot of yeah. money. Um, but yeah, I, I love Smith as a left tackle right now. Uh, Left tackle, Eric Flowers, um, who's in Jacksonville, missed five games in the last four years you have. So durability. You know, a lot yeah. of the guys that I was looking up as far as left tackle positions go, with the exception of Warmack, are guys that are have been durable. Mm -hmm. They've only missed maybe a handful of games in, in that same amount of years. Well, So Flowers was a guy that was drafted by the Giants when Coughlin was there, and obviously Coughlin's in, in Jacksonville. Right. Obviously brings him down. Um, yeah. he's, he's got the prototypical size. Of, of a left tackle that you would want, plus a guy that can play the swing, mm -hmm. play on the right side. He can play, yeah, he can play both sides. I think that makes him the most interesting out of all these guys mm -hmm. because he is the most versatile out of all the guys that you had listed. Um, is that he can play both sides of the line because you really don't know where you're going to need him. Is he going to be great? I don't know. He's not going to be great, but is he going to be good enough? I mean, I think he's an upgrade over Jordan Mills. Yeah, if you, know? you ask me right now, yeah, he's, he's an upgrade, upgrade over, over Mills. Mills. You say, listen, you, you got Cyril's there right now. Would you like mm -hmm. to have Eric Flowers? Right for like. And how old is he? 26. 26 years old. Yeah. And a majority of these guys, with the exception of, uh, who is Roger Saffold. Sa Roger Saffold. With the exception of Roger Saffold, which is a pipe dream. I yeah, that. I know. All these guys are under 30, well under 30. Yeah. So these yeah. are guys that are coming off of their rookie deals, and the team just simply can't afford them unless they start making drastic changes to their rosters. Right. Well, I mean, we just mentioned him, so let's talk about Saffold. He's 31. Oh. I know you love him, but again, he's got the best, the second best offensive line coach in the NFL, in in the Rams. The offensive line coach for the Pats should be going into the Hall of Fame. He's been there for like 30 years. He should be <laughs> the first position coach ever inducted to the Hall of Fame. Should be that guy. 
but I mean, t- the whole Pats offensive line, fourth round players and undrafted players. They and anyway, anyway, you want to talk about the secret of the Pats' success? You and I could play the left side of the line for the Pats when the ball's out in two point five seconds every time. Yeah, the um, the current uh, when we'll get to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Roger Saffold, he was a holdover from the Rams regime. Right. So, uh, the the Rams currently are thirty four million dollars under the cap, which is a, which is a nice number. That However, number. they have the least amount of players, thirty nine under contract. Yeah, they got a lot. So of, they got to build a roster. They have to build staff. through the draft. So Saffold is a guy who's going to be a free agent with all the free agent moves they made last year and all the money that they've been dishing out. I don't think I don't think they can afford him. Right. He's a guy that can, that hopefully will have a championship pedigree. Well, not only that, but over. I mean, if yeah, that's the thing. You get the Super Bowl bonus, whether you win it or not. You get the Super Bowl bonus in your next contract. There's always that little you bend to the dance. Now yeah. come teach our guys what it's like. Yeah. And Saffold again, from an age perspective, from an experience standpoint, uh, you look at the state of the Bills' offensive line. You have to imagine the Bills are going to bring in another center. Uh, a young center to compete. Um, you know, you've got Teller that's still there. You've got a really young offensive line. You're going to need somebody who's been around the block a few times to, to teach those guys. The only problem is Saffold doesn't have a connection to OG Bobby Johnson. <laughs> no, he doesn't. So He may have a connection to money, though. I think he likes money. <laughs> yeah, money might be the thing. Uh, the thing about Saffold, even though he's 31, I think he is the straw that serves to drink for this offensive line because if... You know, you like you like Flowers as a swing guy, mm-hmm. all right? The thing that intrigues me so much about Saffold is he'll bring a championship pedigree. He'll come in. He's an excellent blocker. He's not penalized a lot. Teller can learn from him. Mm-hmm. The most important thing is whoever's a center, and if they want to keep Dawkins at tackle, mm-hmm. he makes Dawkins better. I agree with that. He makes Dawkins better at tackle. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, plus, you know. So he you, serves multiple needs on that left side, talking to the center and Dawkins. You also saw this season where when it came to calling protection at the line, right, the guard is critical to that, right? He the is. guard is critical. And the Bills don't have anybody with experience that's really got the ability to make those protection calls. I think Saffold takes that pressure off of whoever is at center. Right, because Saffold, well, does. yeah, does. Because Saffold's going to be especially if you draft a rookie, right? right exactly. To take Bodine's spot, exactly. Uh, I like Saffold a lot. Saffold means could mean a lot to this team. Um, and I, then you're going to break your own rule talking about I'm guys inside the division. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Trenton Brown from New England. Why? I mean, he's six eight. So I mean, the guy's a monster. Six eight, three fifty five. He's just a monster. <laughs> That's signing Braun Strowman to play left tackle for you. <laughs> You're going to get these hands. Um, well, the biggest thing about Trent Brown, wasn't he in San Francisco? He in was New a England? seventh round pick by, yeah. the, by the 49ers. Yeah. The interesting thing about him, that he's 6'8", 355, yes. The guy plays like 15, 20% of special teams as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how McDermott and Bean love those crossover yeah. guys. They're able to play special teams as well. Yeah. I, I only say... Just for sheer size, and the guy was a developmental project drafted by the Niners. Okay, he's in New England. Does that cover up probably some of his things that he does? Maybe, perhaps. You know, being there. Uh, but at six eight three fifty five, I'm taking the gamble on that kid that's twenty five years old. Mm-hmm. Is a left t- and now I'm going to steal a line from you. You played left tackle for the New England Patriots. The admission to that park is not cheap. No. You have to protect Tom Brady's blind side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So that being said, I'm willing to push aside my trepidation about taking guys within the division to sign him. The the Patriots have their lowest salary cap in years this year. Although they always find ways to work around it, Mm -hmm. um, and, and they might. I don't know. I don't know. I think this would be, if you're able to get him from the Patriots you're able to add a valuable piece to your team while taking a piece away from a division rival yeah. I think that that would be absolutely huge and the guy's just a, a complete monster the one thing that they always talk about with left tackles, tackles in general is the arm length mm-hmm. All right, a lot of these tackles that are coming in for, through the draft, they don't have the ideal arm length there's only like one or two Yeah. so 
that is huge in order well, to get those the, speed rushers and off the ground. Reason, and that the reason why you're starting to see smaller tackles is because these guys need to kick to the outside because of this spread concept, mm -hmm. right? So you, you have speed rushers coming in from the outside. Unfortunately, these guys that are bigger, they just don't have the kick anymore because the speed rushers are just getting faster. So you, you end up having smaller tackles uh, at the college game because they got to get outside, right? That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. They got to get outside. Um, I, I think that's... Uh, I, I think it's an interesting thought to bring in Trenton Brown. I, I, it's an interesting thought. Um, here, my contention here is that, again, he comes from a phenomenal system. Yes. Right? Comes from a phenomenal system. And we don't know what the communication is like down the line, right? Who's responsible for what? Because remember, if you, what's the key to trying to beat Tom Brady? You got to pressure him, right? Yeah. Right. So that means that communication along that line, it has to happen with pressure coming from all over the place. So my contention is that you take him out of that system. I, I really think it's a system-based thing. Does he have the size? Sure. But would Greg Robinson have worked in that system? Yeah. Well, then why would you want Trent Brown? What do you think Trent Brown? Just big tree fall hard. Like, is that he's stupid. No, <laughs> the words never came out of my mouth. Just talking about scheme. Uh, I think scheme plays a big part in it. But like I said, though you can't teach those measurables. You really can't. No. 6'8", 355 pounds. And giving up the least amount of sacks, he, he can kick outside. That's true. He that's can. that's impressive for a guy that size. He can. Why he was a seventh rounder, I don't know. It could be character concerns that may turn being a McDermott off. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, admittedly he was a project. And now he seems, after a couple of years in New England, maybe he's a polished one. Well, I mean, that's what those seven, six seventh-round picks are good for. Central Henderson was the same thing for the Bills. And he was a steal mm -hmm. late in the draft. I mean, granted, character concerns, left, right, and center. You would never, the Bills would never invest a pick like that now. Really? He had to do it. We're talking about offensive linemen. You go left, right, and center. Yeah. What? I'm a dad, dude. We only have puns. That's all we live by now. That's it. So great. All my jokes became relevant when I became a dad. 